With the call for the resignation of Oshomole, is there another crisis brewing in the APC? Big question. Now, the governor of Lagos State, uh, some say, has a daunting task, but does he? This is Plus Politics, and I am Mariana Cohn. Deputy National Chairman of the All Progressive Congress, Senator Lawal Shoaibu, has called on the party's National Chairman, Adam Zashimali, to resign from office, and many have supported that call, claiming he is responsible for the crisis in the party. Now, I have with me to discuss this, uh, Rachman Adebiyi, he is a political analyst, and of course, Obi Ajegwa, a legal practitioner. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for joining us. Thank you. All right. So, of course, uh, if you've been reading the papers or you're listening to the news, you know that this was a big headline. The, a man's deputy asking his number one in command to step down because all fingers point to him. Let's rewind to before the elections. There were so many issues within the um, blocks of the APC in different states. In fact, as we speak, the courts are still upturning some of these, you know, judgments because of the infighting in the APC. But can we really solely put this at the foot of Osh Adam Sushomali? I'll start with you, Obi. You know, when Adam Sushomali was appointed, I cracked a joke to my one of my APC friends. I said, are you sure this man is for you people? Or is he not, is he, has he not been planted here? Because there was so much chaos so much um, he was trying to exert himself did not follow uh, some say he did not follow democratic procedures and everything but he's the chairman they have to live with him mm. but uh, i mean this is a man that has let's do a little digging into his background mm. before he became a governor or a politician he was a comrade. comrade he was a labor man he knew how to get things done or press the right buttons and maybe the, hence the reason why he was made governor, but we don't know how... I, I cannot tell if he was really successful, is my opinion, by the way. Um, some people would say he was a successful governor, some might say he wasn't. Mm -hmm. Now, he moved from there to become a party chairman. One would also expect that, you know, he would bring his wealth of knowledge as a leader of the NLC for as long as he had been, you know, to better the loss of the APC. Or could, could he have been that, you know, we all thought wrong? You see, the, there's um, something we need to ask ourselves that APC had a lot of burden carried forth. Mm. And, you know, when you carry such burden forth in less than four years, you know, and if you don't manage yourself internally, because a house that is divided against itself will definitely fall like a pack of cards. And, you know, what I expect after the victory was that you should go back and to the foundation of the party, because the party was nimble. It, it means that as nimble and fragile as, as it is, chances are that it, it was going to fall off. Mm -hmm. And that, that, that big crack happened sh even shortly before the uh, inauguration uh, of the last uh, regime. And before you know it, the Senate was the first battleground. Immediately you see that, then you know that something is brewing. You don't need to be told. You just need to ask yourself the honest question, how well is this party ready to go through the internal democracy, to be able to strengthen from inside out? And if you fail to do that, what will happen? You begin to realize that the issues will begin to snowball to different things. Take, for example, when Adams was meant to be, uh, 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 to me, I use the word appointed as the chairman of the party. We can see the hand in hand going around. You see, allow internal democracy to flourish. When internal democracy flourish, you save your, yourself the havoc that will come on in future. We, in life, we all disagree to agree, mm -hmm. and we agree to disagree. But, and you know, that's just uh, to paint the picture of internal democracy in a way that it, was, it is self-cleansing. It will, at the long run, is better for you than to short, you know, to shortcut the whole process. I'm trying to understand. Are you saying that Adams Oshomole's emergence as the party chairman was not 
a result of internal democracy. I'm because not. Negotiate. <laughs> because I want to be clear on this. Because, again, the antecedents of a man, uh, you know, somewhat I, matters I have in question. the way he runs. I have a question, you know, because that's... Well, I asked the question. Uh, yeah, I, I have a question. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, I have a question. Uh, how many people contested for that position? There is none. So he was unopposed. So he was you get? practically selected. Yes. Do you get? So, so, and you know, when you, be, when you have two people come contesting for a position, it gives you the opportunity to know, when to know the strength of A and B, mm -hmm. and then you hear the unsaid, then it will be, everything will be out in the open. But when it's not that way, then, sorry, there will be a lot of gray areas that you cannot find out until you get into the playing field. And by the time you get there, it's too late to reverse because you, you're already there. And the only thing you can do is to fire fight, hmm. do reactionary measures here and there. Bef during the campaign, sorry, to run up to the election, you realize that everybody from a from the north to the south were crying foul of one anomaly or the other in the party. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, some uh, even during the primary elections, you can see the upturn of the primary elections. There were t so many so parallel, many, so many know, congresses parallel and primaries. congresses, so many issues here and there. And when you begin to see those things, all you just need to sit back and wait for the outcome. And the outcome is what's blowing in the hands of Nigerians, mm -hmm. you know, in the face of every Nigerian now, because it's now not a party issue anymore. It's a, it's a national issue. The Zanfara case is there. A lot of other cases are there. So you ask yourself the question, if you want to better a society, let the political system, the political party, you know, ruling or opposition, let them go through the right procedure mm -hmm. of you know entrenching democracy so that the the governance system that you eventually find will be better for the people let me go you know refer to the letter that was um, written by the deputy national chairman of the apc um senator lawal shraib well he said and i quote i write this letter thinking because i am a critical stakeholder in the apc project I write this letter with my hands shaking, arising from realizing my involvement in a project that is currently seen as failing. Even before achieving the ambition of its founding fathers, I never found myself in any failed project. I mean, I'm a, I'm, I'm a student of literature. I see so many metaphorical and some very realistic words in this paragraph that I've read. For a man who says his hands are shaking, it might be metaphorical, it might be real. Does this mean that, Obi, there is fire on the mountain, there is, you know, so, trouble or trouble in the house of the APC? So is this as bad as this letter makes it seem? It is, it, it, I think it is worse than the letter makes it seem. Really? Because what happened in Rivers, no APC seat. What happened in Zamfara, a whole state was seated, nothing, not, no gain. There's, there, there's trouble. And there are, other, there, there, there are a lot of cases in the tribunal which might go against APC, which means that these figures they are touting in, this, in the House, they might end up being a minority if care isn't taken. Because when you look at the, the ones that they've um, lost in um, Zamfara, oh, really? it's becoming very close between PDP and APC. In the Senate. And the Senate becoming very close. So now, if you don't have majority, it's still the same old um, house you would have. Mm. So we go, we, they revert to normal. Now, he, he also said that, he, he, he put out an advice. He says, I want to advise you to take the path of honor, to step mm. aside and allow the party to embark on the uh, runner's task of reconstruction and rehabilitation in states <laughs> uh, that he thinks uh, was weakened by the effect of the last primary election. So obviously they are referring to what you just spoke yeah. about and they're saying we cannot recalibrate if you're still in power. So do you see, again, let's not forget this is a strong comrade, a strong <laughs> union leader, a very stubborn governor mm -hmm. and now a party chairman. Do you see him stepping aside? I'm just wondering. Is the, this going to in the history of Nigeria, how many people have stepped aside? I mean, the for first, the best, in the best interest the of the first, party. The first leader of the House of Reps, remember him? Yes. He was the first, he's the first person that stepped aside. 
in the history of okay, in the history okay, of this. Well, but that's one person. What's the percentage of that man compared the, to? The, yeah, I know. The, the the question is, the party need to see. He is, he is playing a very good role by you know painting the picture because the picture he's painting is a picture of someone who does not want the project to fail on him. Mm -hmm. Because if he fails on him, they are all, you know, a system fail in bits. And you begin to see the sign that it's failing until you get a complete blackout. A complete blackout means that you entirely <coughs> lose control of everything. And right now, they're like on a knife edge. If they don't do something now, then something will do them. <laughs> no, but, but you see, my, my, my worry is that because of where we are the, in the world, we as Nigerians don't seem to take you know, advice from our subordinates. You know? And then let's not forget, he is his deputy. And so I'm looking at it from a, an average Nigerian perspective of who are you to tell me what to do? And that's why he starts this letter, I believe, by saying, I'm hoping, I'm writing this because I think I'm a critical stakeholder in this APC project. He's not sure if he would be welcomed, but he, is a, he might as well go ahead with this letter and say, this is an advice. The earlier you, seek, you, know, to, you take to this advice, the better. But do we see the party realistically welcoming this letter and doing something about it? Because, I, again, you have said, Oshimole might not willfully step aside, never. So It boils down to, you see, Oshimole has his backers. And the deputy ch um, ch the chairman yeah. has his backers. He can't just wake up and write that letter without consulting. So it now depends on the momentum whichever one gains. If he gains more momentum over Oshimali, then Oshimali will be forced to re re resign. Yeah. Hmm. So it's now another thing of numbers, it's another game no, of it's, numbers. No, it's any day, it's, it's a, game of, a game of numbers. It's a game of numbers. Because if you don't have the people behind you, then it's dead on arrival. Whatever happened to moral standing and, you know, <laughs> th having the best interest of whatever it is that you're dealing with at heart? I mean, I'm, co I'm guessing that the reason why the APC came together was to bring what they call change. And um, We've uh, seen the these change. days we don't really understand <laughs> what that is, but I'm just saying. So if they had an idea, a picture that was painted, are they not losing sight of that picture if there is no room for you know morals and values to come into play? They need to help themselves at, at the moment now because they are at a critical moment in which see the challenge I have is this issue affecting the nation, affecting governance, affecting delivery of the dividend of democracy to the, to the people, and that's why when uh, all these things happen and you know we let them know, we put it on the table, we give them free advices that they're not paying for, they take them for granted and see it as, oh, okay, these guys are talking. No, we're only because we own this country together, and if we don't give the right advice at the right time, what what you do will rub off on everybody. So at the moment now, I think this is the best time for them to go back to their table, to their drawing board and begin to get it right. Because by the time they get it right, then the better for the, for the country, because this country needs to leapfrog right now from where it is you know, into the future, because we, are, we need to, to advance in such a way that, you know, we, because we've lost a lot of ground. So we need to cover up as quick as possible. And losing ground, in the last four years is as a result of all this internal crisis that we found ourselves you know, having and not resolving and making a, an internal crisis become a national issue. Mm -hmm. So, and when you begin to have things like that, then you be, the only thing you can tell the party is sit up, man. If you don't sit up, let somebody else get, it, get a seat. Mm -hmm. Because Nigerians cannot wait. Because before you know it now, it will snowball into the house. It will snowball into every other house of assembly, the governors. And before you know it, uh, the president will be saying some caliber of people are holding him to ransom. So what, are we not getting the brunt of it? I'm just wondering, um, Obi, will this, one way or the other, will we see another wave of exodus from party A to party B, which is something that is very usual in this part of the world, a little hitch here and there, and then everybody packs their bags and, you know, look, they begin to look for safer places to go to. Do we see the APC disintegrating anytime soon? If this um, letter uh, of advice to Shomole is not taken, you know, uh, the way it should be. 
The, we have another four years before the next elections. Most people start moving when it's coming on to the ending of the for the four years, in case they don't feel they're not they're not going to they're, go, they're not going to get what they want from that party. But another thing again is, if this continues, it will just it, it will just increase the impetus of the other party looking more attractive. Hmm to people than to them. And of course the APC wouldn't want that to happen. They won't want of that course. to happen. Because they want to have their fair share of eight <laughs> years, I guess. Of course. I'm guessing. <laughs> no, no, but the, uh, power, is, power is very, you know, sweet. Mm. Uh, you know, like you, you, you won't taste it and you want to leave it. Uh, before we wrap this segment up, I, I want us to look at democracy because I'm guessing, I want to believe that we're practicing democracy in Nigeria, even though, you know, we have our way of doing things in this part of the world. If a party who is telling us that they want to bring us, the people, democracy, mm -hmm. cannot have internal democracy, what does that say about us as a nation? What are you serving us? Because I'm just saying, and this is detail for all the political parties, especially the biggest political parties. If they are not able to put their house together, what kind of government are we expecting from them? It's an issue of uh, garbage in, garbage out. The, as you know, the same question you asked for the party, ask for any Nigerian, are we ready, you know, are we ready to imbibe the value system that, you know, will uphold us as a people of virtue? These are the questions we must ask ourselves. Are we ready to practice things, uh, you, know, you know, to play by the rules and principles of ethics? Are we ready to follow processes? Are we ready to, uh, to, to do things in the right way without trying to jump the gun? When all this principle elopes a people, you find a lot of shortcomings, and it will snowball into their institutions and what have you. So the system will begin to bleed. And when the system bleeds in such a way, it will get into the political party, because the people are a product of society. And the society are the ones that are bringing, bringing the, the politicians. Mm -hmm. And by the time they get there, they carry forth what they've learned or their way of life into that party. And that party will have one or two defects, which is uh, the issue of it's a, a goal, it's my right, uh, you know, even if you are there, you know, not, you know uh, discipline will be, not be practice very well the way it should be practiced. So people will now begin to do things the way they like. And when you do things the way you like, it means that the system you set of how democracy should work, which you start from internal, from the party, will now begin to be far away. Everybody will begin to ask yourself. And by so doing, if, the, if that party win elections, you know, by chance, it will, it will snowball into the bigger sphere of society, whereby you begin to now struggle to ask yourself, where are we? Where's, where's the democracy we're all yearning for? Where's the democracy that we all voted for? Mm. Where's the democracy that we all labeled for? So the question will now keep going in circles like that and unending. So the question now is, we need to imbibe value. Our value systems are you know, defective. Uh, you know, from the old to the young, to, you know, everybody needs to come back and ask themselves the honest question, what do I want for Nigeria? Very, very, very good question. Finally, Obi, um, there are people who are, there are warring factions in the APC as we speak. I'll take River State as, you know, an example. You still have the Amici faction and you still have the Magnus Abe faction. And I tell you what, whether we like it or not, Magnus Abe is touted as the evil one who came to break up the party, you know. But then nobody's really addressing the antecedents of all of this. If we, again, going back to the question of internal democracy, if, for example, we, we believe that Adams of Shomole, according to this letter, is the reason for all of this infighting, <laughs> Do we ever see these warring factions ever being somewhat brought together on the same table to talk things out, or are they going to have to go their separate ways because they might never see eye to eye on issues such as this? You know, democracy means government of the people, for the people, by the people. So when you have people, there's always going to be conflict. 
if you have a party and everything is smooth sailing, I get worried because when the crack hits, the party will never recover from that. Mm. At a point in time, they will all go into their closet and say, look at what we did in Rivers. Who lost that? We lost that. Are we going to do that another four years? And maybe by now, the, Zamf the former Zamfara governor would have been regretting not welcome, not dialoguing with Oshio Mali. And Oshio Mali too would have been regretting not, not trying to um, have peace. But it's always in their best interest to, to seal up the cracks. And anyway, there are parties that are very eager to get people from them. So, of course, if they don't do it, then, of course, other, they'll lose other those person people. will take it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, uh, I want to thank you very much, Raman Adebi, political analyst, Obi Ajaybo, legal practitioner, for having this conversation with me. But they're not going anyway. Stay tuned. They will be right back because, of course, we're going to come home to Lagos. Uh, there is a lot that is brewing here. And, of course, we'll be looking at the journey that lies ahead of the latest governor of Lagos State. Stay with us. It's still Plus Politics. We'll be right back after this break.